Hey everyone, it's Mark, and um, <clears throat> this Christmas I decided to take some time off and uh, sculpt a little bit, just because I, uh, you know, try to keep my my skills up to date. Because if you don't sculpt, you tend to to lose your abilities, um, mainly in like how you how you see things and and what looks right and what doesn't. Um, it's like an acquired skill, so. I just try to do this kind of stuff once in a while. And water-based clay is really easy to use. Somebody asked on my previous video, my in-progress video, of, you know, how how I made it. So I'm just going to explain briefly how it's done. Uh, I got a little container here. It's actually a CD case or CD container uh, for buying CDs and stuff. And I've got my tools in here. I keep them wet because when you work with this water-based clay, it's... Uh, it can dry out, so here's some dry clay. It gets really hard, and you can see it's, it gets lighter in color when it dries. And you can literally like sand this or carve it if you want to. Um, it just kind of turns to dust. So uh, you know you don't want that to happen on your tools. So you keep them wet, and you can see it's it's pretty dirty water. It's kind of muddy. Um, you use different tools like the brush to get into to details with the water and just smooth them out. Uh, I did that with the hair. And then I have one tool that Ralph Corodero, I'm probably saying his name wrong, uh, explained how you make one of these where you take a loop tool and you take some wire and you wrap it around your loop tool and that makes like a rake. And he said that was good for wrinkles, but I couldn't quite figure out how that was, you know, good for wrinkles because it makes a, a uniform texture. So I used it for the hair and I just raked it along here and, you know, went down the clay and then went back in with uh, with my brush with water and just, you know, smoothed in, you know, all these little details and stuff. And I've also got a smaller brush and it's, and these are both, I guess, synthetic. Nothing really special to them. I, I use this for oil-based clay too. and um, you, know, you can use alcohol or, or oil to smooth stuff out, but for this, just just you know, for water, and you just go in there and uh, you know, kind of smooth these details out um, carefully. And you can use more water if it's if the clay gets a little bit stiff. You just add more water to it and go along the edge. And it's really easy. And water-based clay is fast to sculpt, so that's why I used it for this. Um, you can also take your sponge and, you know, squeeze it out and blot it on the clay to get that sort of texture. Um, that little white piece is a piece of styrofoam that's underneath as part of the armature for this. Not really sure what I'm going to do with this, you know, after it's... I don't know if I'll just destroy it or what. Or maybe try to make a mold of it or something. But, uh... That's my son there, and you can see I um, I use this for reference. I just took pictures of him, and then from there I took measurements. I printed it out, you know, the same size as his head uh, by cut, cropping it from the top to the bottom of his head, and then sizing it with. Uh, I used some calipers, and I measured his head and got the precise measurement. I think it was like six and a half inches or. Actually, I think it's more than that. I can't remember, though. But uh, I measured it, and then I printed it out, and I've got some different views you can see here. I noticed that when this shot, I took him laying down on the ground, kind of held him down and took his picture. And then this one here, I made him stand under this, this light here to get the same lighting that I would have on the sculpt. So if I got the same... Uh, you know, the same forms happening under the light. Let's see if I can kind of, you know, I got the same forms as here as in under this light. I knew that I got, you know, things pretty close. So, I like these little details, like this little, that little teeny line under his eye here. You know, that's that right there. You can see it. So, you know, there's little things like that that you know, under a harsh light really stick out and you can you can see how things are supposed to look. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it. That's how I did it and um, 
don't really know what I'm going to do with it, like I said. And I also don't know if I should pursue this kind of stuff, you know, like make monuments for people or things like that. It's kind of fun, but uh don't really know how you make money at this kind of stuff. <laughs> so if anybody knows how to make money at doing this, just leave a comment in the video and say, Hey Mark, here's how you do it. Anyway, there it is. You can see some close-ups. Um, somebody asked, I think Paul, Paul on Facebook said, how did, Oh, I didn't realize the eyes are hollow. Yeah, they're actually hollow, and that way if you have someone with dark eyes, um, you get that sort of effect. It's got some teeth in there. You know, nostrils are hollowed out. Uh, by the way, what I did before, if you guys saw the last video, is <clears throat> I cut his ears off, moved them down and, and forward a bit. And you know, I should probably I should probably fix some of these parts, like here. This here doesn't look so good. I should add some lines where his hair is. I don't know if that shows up on video, or will show up. I mean, just the light. Kind of smooth that out water on this brush now it's just a matter of like I'm just trying to like go over it and detail it make sure there's nothing weird no stray clay or like here you can see there's a little a little bit messy there some of the parts that, that sculptors don't pay attention to are usually like behind the ears under the hair and same with me. It's one of those things you don't really focus on, so you don't think it's important, but I'm just dipping my finger in some water here and then I'll go back in and try to smooth it out. It's not that hard to do. Like I said, water based clay is really easy to work with, but if you just like flick it with your finger by accident, you can take out half your sculpt. <laughs> The other cool part about sculpting is you don't have to worry about like what you look like. Like if you go to a job where it's important, you gotta dress up, but most sculptors, the reason why they don't show you their face on camera, or if they do, they're probably really good at sculpting, but someone like me, I just kinda, I didn't even shave today, so. <laughs> so that's kinda what's cool about you know, trying to get freelance jobs, like if you're working with a, a client over the phone and they want want a puppet made or something, you just talk to them on the phone, you don't see them face to face. You can wear your pajamas all day or whatever. Or if you're, like some people, just wear your underwear. <laughs> but don't tell your clients, because then they'll be freaked out. Alright, so, anyway, that's kind of pretty much, you know, how you do it. Uh, I mean, of course, there's a lot more to that, but I have a, a whole DVD on how to sculpt, so. But lining is really important if you guys are, are wanting to sculpt. You know, one of these kind of lights like this with an arm on it, where you can move it, it's really helpful. Especially if you want to see if, like a lot of people, they, they keep the light in one spot. And then, like, underneath the chin... It'll be really rough and they'll never notice it and they'll think they're finished and then they move the light down here like this and you see all kinds of imperfections so having the ability to move your lights really helpful all right well anyway it's uh almost 10 minutes i'm just going to cut this off now thanks for uh thanks for watching